Good morning, Vineyard family. I'm Terry Northrup. This week we've been talking about paradise, and we always think about that scripture in uh, Luke chapter 23, verse, uh, start with verse 39. It talks about the, the criminals who were uh, crucified with Jesus, and this was their conversation. Then one of the criminals who was hanged blasphemed him, saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And, in, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. You know, when we think about paradise, we think of this beautiful, lush place uh, like the Garden of Eden, and that is one of the definitions of paradise. It could also be heaven, uh, the kingdom of God. All these things are synonymous with paradise. And I wanted to share with you today a little bit of a contrast to paradise. This is the what came to my mind when I was given this topic. Uh, but let's pray first. Father, we thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for your love and kindness to us, your great mercy, your love. Thank you that we have a promise of paradise. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's turn back to Luke chapter 16. And we're going to read the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. There was a certain rich man I'm sorry, this is 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, Remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father, father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to them, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead." Well, that's a sobering scripture. It makes me think about so many things, but, you know, the fact that if for those who will not listen to the word of God, they won't listen to Moses or the prophets, they're probably not going to be listening to Jesus either, though he was raised from the dead. But I think about this, this contrast between Hades and what I think is paradise, where the righteous dead live, and... A, uh, Lazarus was comforted in that place. And when we think about paradise, we think about being with Jesus, to be comforted, to be relieved from all our trials and suffering of this world. And, you know, some people try to make this world their paradise. You know, they say, um, you know, go to Hawaii, go to paradise, or it's just another day in paradise here in Southern California and uh, just making the best of this life and, 
and taking all the comfort they can have in this life. But God promises a be- us a better place, a place where he reigns and rules and we're in with, with him in his presence. You know, whenever we come and, and worship him, whenever we are in his presence, we are tasting that paradise of God. He's giving us a foretaste many times of what it will be like to be with him. So let's pray. Father, thank you, God, for your word. Pray that you would bless us this week, Father, um, this weekend that coming. Watch over us. Be with us. Help us to keep our minds set on you and set on that place where we will be with you. In Jesus' name, amen.
worship your 